Hey everybody, welcome back to our Grandmaster series for Overwatch 2 with Coach Theory. And today we're going to go into a character uh, or a hero named Sojourn. Uh, I have not played a lot of Sojourn. Um, Sojourn is relatively new. Sojourn is not available to anyone just out of the gate. Um, we'll explain that a little bit um, and then, uh, then we'll dive in. Uh, Sojourn is DPS. Um, and with this series, we're rotating every week or every, uh, episode between, um, a support, a tank and a DPS. So we're back to our DPS cycle. If you haven't seen our previous DPS, uh, the Genji video has been, uh, relatively well received. So we're excited about that. Now we're diving into Sojourn. All right. So yeah, talking about Sojourn, um, she was the first hero that came out the first DPS hero that came out with Overwatch 2. So as long as you played Overwatch 1 before you got Overwatch 2, then you should have Sojourn unlocked. Otherwise, you're going to have to do hero-specific challenges, which you can just find like in the challenge tab on the starting menu. And those will just tell you, you know, do these certain challenge, like like requirements in the training range. And then you're going to have to do other requirements, like win a certain amount of games playing DPS or things like that, right? So, you know, unlocking Sojourn isn't very difficult. You just need to follow what the game's telling you. Uh, but actually talk about where she fits in to the game and the different team compositions, right? Before we did Genji, he's focused on playing with a dive comp with people with high mobility. So that's going to be like Winstons, Tracers, Sombras, people that are really good at disrupting the enemy backline, right? And then Sojourn is going to be taking a step in the opposite direction. So you're going to be playing for her range. She's very similar to maybe like an Ash, a Soldier, Widowmaker. But the great thing about Sojourn is she's kind of like a hybrid of range and close range because her primary fire is going to be her... You know, it's going to be like a projectile, but then her, her right click, her secondary fire is is going to be a hit scan, kind of like a Widowmaker. Um, and if we're comparing this to other heroes, like maybe a Genji or Reaper, they can only play close range, or maybe like a Soldier. A Soldier can only, you know, poke for further range, but Sojourn has that projectile, so she can kind of switch back and forth from playing closer range and then pivoting into a long range railgun shot, which is really fun. Um, so to talk about her slide, slide ability, it's just kind of a little slide into a jump. Uh, very good for dodging enemy cooldowns, any dives on you, say like a Winston or a Genji, right? If they use their dash or their jump, you're going to be trading that cooldown for your slide to create that distance again. And now you, now you created that distance. And so from heroes, say like a Reaper teleports on you. Reaper wants to close that distance, you don't want him to. So if anybody makes an attempt to close the distance, you're responding by, again, making that distance with your slide. Um, and then her E, her disruptor shot, is going to be very good at zoning enemies. It creates an orb of damage, and anybody standing in this orb is just going to take damage over time, okay? And so say if we were holding this corner, and the enemy tank was walking up, we could simply send this disruptor shot at the corner, right here and that's that's gonna isolate the enemy tank and then you can just burst down the tank instead and then really quick if you just want to show the uh, railgun shot if you charge it up off of me you're gonna see on the middle of your screen that that little zero icon is going to go to the maximum of 100 and so the higher charge that is the more damage that's going to do with your right click shot so sojourn ultimate is going to rapidly charge your railgun over time so if you pop your ult you're just gonna see that your railgun is just going to keep cycling back up to 100%, so it's just a very high damage output like over time. So you could take an off angle, take a high ground, and you pop the salt, you're going to be doing so much damage. And if you combine this with your E or maybe a slide to take an aggressive angle, you're going to be getting a lot of value that way. Got it. Okay. No, so as we were saying before, Sojourn is the opposite of, say, like a dive hero like Genji, and she's very effective at range. So at this range, I'm still going to be charging my rail, and it's most of the time, it's really nice to just be able to charge your railguns off the enemy tank and look for a railgun on somebody in his backline, just because you can get consistent damage off the tank, right? Um, and then same thing, I would just be looking for ease right behind him on that corner, and that would make it so his team can't help him, and now I'm bursting down the tank still. Awesome. Well, thanks for showing us through that. Excited to see it now in a quick play game, and then we'll review a competitive game as well. Hey. Hello. Hey. All right, so step one, uh, number one tip is when you have a Mercy, okay, I want you to come up to your Mercy and teabag next to her the whole start of the round and say hello as many times as possible as well, okay? And this will guarantee you the highest chance of having a Mercy pocket. There you go. Hello. 
One more mission. Hey. And as with any character, a mercy pocket is very helpful, but I'm assuming with Sojourn, especially with the rail damage, if you can one shot yeah. a light character, it'll do a lot of damage to medium or heavies. Absolutely, yeah. The the damage boost on the rail the rail gun is is kind of crazy sometimes. You can you can do some one shots with only being like a little over half charged a lot of time. So here that E is just going to be, you know, doing damage and helping zone them out. And so like off this Winston shield right now, I'm just charging charging my rail. Does that E charge the um charge your railgun or no? Only the bullets? Uh no, it. it's so oh, it's it's only your primary fire. Got it. And so as you can see like with this damage boost from the Mercy, she she does a lot of damage on those real shots. But so I I've heard um I've heard this question before, you know, why why play Sojourn over Soldier? Like I was Soldier I can heal myself and I always have mobility, right? The main thing is the damage the damage, you know, possibilities, the damage output you can obtain with Sojourn with those real shots. Soldier is gonna be more consistent damage over time. But Sojourn has those big spikes of damage with those rail guns, and that's the main reason you would want Sojourn over a Sojourn. I see. I do also believe the zoning as well, right? Yeah, Seems yeah. helpful. The zoning, yes. She's just going to be a lot better at playing with kind of the core of her team, and Soldier would be looking for more flanky off angles, if that makes sense. Yep. And you know, as you can see, I'm playing on this on this high ground. It's it's very difficult them for them to actually deal with me, because I just always have easy damage output on them, and they, they can't reach me up there, right? Like yep. this this roadhog is a close range hero, so I'm just focused on maintaining my distance. If roadhog walks up to me, I'm just gonna slide away from him and keep that distance the entire time. So I saw you slide back into combat there, right? Using yeah. your slide, so. So you you can use your your slide progression, but it's really important that you realize when you have that resource advantage to actually take advantage of something like that. Yep. If I have, you know, if it's just an even fight, I should never be sliding in. It's kind of just saving my slide for a disadvantage or an advantage. But so here I'm going to use it to get the high ground again, just making distance from the Roadhog. And I'm just focusing on zoning out his teammates. You know, Summer's on my team, obviously force her out. But now here, I'm just going to throw an E here. And now we're just focused on fighting this isolated Roadhog with the Kiriko. Ideally, you know, we can we can force this Kiriko out. Same thing, I, I'm, you know, they are pushing the pillar. I'm just scared of the Roadhog still. I want to keep my distance with them. Okay, so now I have my ultimate. So like we said before, it just charges up my railgun very fast. So it's just a huge amount of damage from whatever angle you decide to take it from. The main thing you want to think about is really just your teammates cooldowns. Does my Winston have a jump and a bubble to capitalize off of it, right? Yep. As long as my teammates have cooldowns whenever I pop my ult, then I should be getting fair enough value. Thing, sliding on the high ground, Red King, he can't reach me anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is a very easy showing of of the power of high ground. They they don't have a tank that can you know has easy accessibility to the high ground. So he's just very having a very hard time actually dealing with me with these angles. Right. And then you also have your Winston, right, doing the same thing. I saw him up exactly. there with you. What's great about Winston is he's he's able to disengage back to the high ground because he has that mobility, so he can go in and out of the fight as he wants. Okay, same thing where you know, ideally we, we disengage better with soldiers. So what happened there was I used my slide and then I kinda didn't have it to disengage from that soldier role. So I should have already been on that high ground. So when Soldier popped his ult, I could slide to disengage from it. But Got was it. a mistake on my part. So as you can see, I'm, I'm trying to slide to the side and just keep making distance with the sword hog when I can. Now, Sojourn, it's interesting on DPS because I think, um, like when you think about the game, it can kind of be a lot more simple because it's just like you do damage, you know what I mean? It's like, just yep. do damage, right? Okay, here we are, Winston. Yeah, I'm really just trying to make sure I can control the high gun so that 
they don't have those angles on us, but then also we do have the angles on them, of course. Okay, so when this Roadhog is walking in, look, I'm just eing behind him, and that's gonna be forcing his teammates back. And they can't help him so much. Right now, all I can see is Roadhog. Okay, we see Sombra, we see Kiri. We're trying to force this Kiri out so she can't support Roadhog. Same with Yana. Right. They were under uh, alt, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the Roadhog and the, the Kiri could ulted there, so. And there's too much to sustain. Good to see you. Hello. Good to see you. Hey. We are falling apart. Watch here. When I'm playing Sojourn, I'm always thinking, where's where's the next high ground I can play to get value from? Because anytime I'm playing on a high ground, you know, I can control my engagement timing by by using the you know like the little the corner here. But it also makes it so when people want to contest me, they have to uh, use a cooldown to get there, like like a Winston jump, like a Reaper teleport, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever they reach me, I'm already at a resource advantage because they had to use something to get to me. And then when it comes to this Roadhog, he doesn't even have a cooldown to close the distance on me. So the only way he can get to me is by taking a really long path. And by the time he takes that path, he's going to be down so much health, right? Right. So, you no, know, the distance in it of itself is almost a resource that you can utilize. And I saw that you were dipping off the, uh, the edge when you were reloading. Yeah, yeah. So putting yourself into cover. For sure, same thing, like... I always talking about playing these stable positions and disengaging to your team's space Hello. to get resources back. And I always talk about you know the simple cooldowns like your slide and like my my disruptor shot. Mm -hmm. That also applies to things like my HP or even just reloading. Right, my ammo. If I don't have ammo, I, I can't shoot them, and that is a resource that I need. We're looking for an E on that Zenyatta on that corner. And that's going to force them more into the open. The was that a, that was a rail shot? Yeah, so that was a rail shot that killed that soldier, yep. Again, I'm trying to rail, and we, we railed that song right there. Right, and so a lot of time I'm just kind of charging rails off this Roadhog, which is still applying pressure to him. And then I'm looking for a rail on his backline. Because a rel to somebody in the back line is going to be more value than on Roadhog because he's just going to tank it as right. opposed to them, you know, having to disengage for longer, taking that damage. So we're just going to disengage with my slide, right? This time I had my slide when Soldier ulted, so I did not get punished for that. I can actually do here is now that I have my ult, I can take this aggro angle like this. I can slide over here and boom, now I've, I've kind of given me an access point to the enemy backline, but unfortunately uh, I missed every single shot. That's what you're not wanting to do. But oh, it's cool because I, I can just slide back over to this high gun. That's cool. Again. 
So there, they were trying to like walk up really aggressive on me. So I was trying to take the space behind them. Right. I was gonna slide behind them and then play somewhere behind them there. Yeah. So it looks like you have a Roadhog tank, an Ana, a Kiriko, and a Genji. Yeah. So instantly, I'm thinking, you know, with, with the Roadhog, the main the main source of value that he gets is with his hook. So. Anybody that my Roadhog hooks, I should be shooting, and ideally I should be railgunning anybody who's hooking. Hello. Um, you know, my Onanades, I need to be pressuring anybody who's anti and I need to be pro probably eing my Genji's dives, or at least supporting who's diving, right? As a Sojourn, you're like the main source of damage for your team, so it's very important that you're looking at the right target at the right time. And just really supporting whatever your team's trying to do. So there, I got hooked. Not ideal. I was trying to play that distance. And I was just a little bit too close. Okay, I'm looking to take this off angle right now with my Ana. Pressuring their Ana. Okay, and now I have my slide to disengage from this trace, right? And then I'm eating to zone her out right here. Okay, now I gotta force this on route. A lot of things going on here, but now I just need to disengage again because I'm low HP. And my team needs the resources. And now I can get healed back up after they're done healing my teammates. Okay, so we kind of lose this fight though. But as you can see, it's very important that I'm saving my slide for this Tracer and Sombra. When this Tracer is taking these off angles and when I'm getting hacked by Sombra, if I don't have my slide, I'm going to get caught out. And you're going to end up seeing me get caught out and get punished for that. Good to see you. Just breaking the hog trap here, which does give you a little bit of charge, by the way. Now uh, here, I'm going to slide over to the off angle. I'm sliding to close through this open space. And now I have an off angle on this Ana. Uh, Sombra does TP up me to me though. So, finding Sombra. And, Tracer kind of comes and refract me here. I ideally either get healed by my team, or I should have just sli slid back to them and got healed. And then I could have retucked that angle. That was just a good uh, punish by their Tracer on me. Yeah, so, my team has Kitsune. I simply need to be playing in Kitsune when we use that. Okay, I'm charging up a rel. I'm looking for a rel on the Sombra. Get it. Let me disengage when we're anti. And we're just trying to kind of touch the edge of this Kitsune, but we gotta be careful of this hog, right? If he lands a hook, we're dead. I know he used hook, so now I can re-aggress in his space because he doesn't have that, that threat of hook active, okay? And a lot of people might go try to fight this hog, but there's really nothing I can do. I just gotta respect the hog, and we're just gonna go play the objective. I do have ult here. And here you're gonna see I, I do maintain my distance just perfectly with this hog, so his hook can't reach me. Go for Roll of Mercy. Okay. And my, my hog's aggressing, so I'm trying to assist my hog in this aggression. It wasn't the right play, but the importance is that I'm helping my team in their plays, even if it's not necessarily the perfect play, I'm trying to help my hog in that space. He's contesting there. Yeah, but we end up disengaging with slide once again. And you know, we're, we're playing this high ground angle and I'm gonna look for an ult here. Um, ideally, when their hog is has entered into my team's line of sight, then I can start bursting down his support. So I'm gonna pop ult, focus Ana, okay. You know, focus your mercy. Ideally, I'm just focusing support, see what these rails. And again, I'm sliding out to make space. And you know, you know the rest, I'm just, I'm just shooting whatever I see on my screen basically. But I'm just, you know, trying to target the supports first. And what happens there is I either kill the supports or I force those supports to a passive angle. And then if that, say that Ana disengaged to a corner, now I'm pivoting back to that Roadhog. Say like I already killed the Mercy, I'm just going to be shooting Roadhog the entire time until the Ana peaks again. Okay. So again, we're playing this Hogger angle. This forces the tr this Tracer to have to take this long route to actually get to me. Um, but I should not have tried to mark her here. I should have just played more, more in my team score because they did have a Sombra and I got punished by getting caught out by them. You know, it was just a 2v1. I needed to be thinking about Sombra and Invis and I can't be playing in a position like that. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you. Hello. And then also another thing is I'm, I'm pretty sure I used my slide to get to that angle to contest Tracer so I couldn't even disengage once the hack ran out anyways so I was yeah. kind of just screwed by doing that 
So as you see the hack coming on your screen, you can slide once it's completed, you can't, or how does that work? Yeah, so the hack, um, really, once again, I, I just fell into low ground for no reason. I just need to stay in high ground. I was like thinking, I was like, I want to contest tracer, contest tracer, but it's just not worth it. I'm getting punished for being out of position here. And it's, just, it's a very good example of me getting punished for, for being in the wrong spot. I just need to stay in the high ground. Uh, but to talk about the hack, yeah, so the way Songer's hack work is, it's just like, uh, a hack that takes like one or two seconds to actually get attached to but you can shoot her while she's hacking to cancel it but once that hack comes through i can't use my abilities for like two or three seconds but okay. so yeah if but I, if any I shot on her like, any damage on her cancels yeah any damage on her will cancel her hack but then she can like start it again got it so you need to just be aware of that uh here again i was just a little bit too close to the hog but i was playing the high gun Right, playing that distance, I just need to be a little bit further back. Again, that's me. I'm kind of being myself because, you know, Genji wants to stand next to me. But if he has to stand next to me, well, now he has to take damage from my E. So that's the, the idea there. Got it. And then once again, I'm just sliding out when he's getting close to me, just making that distance. Okay, here I'm taking aggressive high ground angle. And once again, what happens? I slide into space. And now, look, Genji's on me, and I don't have any way to get out because I don't have my slide, and that was a bad play by me. I should have just stayed on the other high ground, so if Genji did contest me, I have my slide to disengage. The only time where I should be looking for an aggressive slide into space is if my team is using a bunch of resources, or if we have an ultimate active. Then I can think about sliding into space. All right, there you go. You get to see me feed again. Love to see it. Yeah, I saw you slide in to try to support your road, yeah. but then you couldn't slide out. Yep. Exactly. Same thing. I'm sliding into space, and then I'm getting punished for not having it to disengage. Got it. So it's almost a little bit like Junker Queen, like we talked about in the last video, saving that shout for the right times. Exactly. Like You don't want to shout to engage. You want it to sustain yourself mid-fight or disengage when you need it. Right. Same idea. Or the Brigitte so shield slam, where you use yep. that to get out exactly. versus using shield it to bash. get in. Shield exactly. bash, yeah. Correct, correct. So at this point in the game... Um, so, not really much I can do there, but I did just help burst down that Kiriko. It was just both Genjis were nanobladed, and it was just like their world, you know? Like, I'm just kind of sitting here, I don't have a, bl I don't have a sword or a nano boost. I'm just gonna die. That's the way it goes. Yep. But when, when Genji did contest me, I slid away and that maintained my life just a little bit longer. Helped me get a little bit more damage on their Kiriko, which, you know, may or may not have been, you know, important in that fight. Yep. Okay. So, new Kitsune. I'm making sure I'm playing Kitsune. I just slide up so I can get to this Kitsune faster. And I'm just bursting down this Junker Queen. If, if somebody's in your Kitsune, they, they should just be dying or taking so many resources that it'll cost cost them to lose that fight. Uh, so here, I was just over peeking. Once that Sojourn E was in that doorway, I need to respect that cooldown and disengage and retake the angle once that E is over. So when you have a lead like this in push, it's important that you recognize when last fight territory kind of is. And we are coming up on the last fight territory. It's a minute 30 seconds left in the round. So it's going to be more beneficial for me to just save my ult for that final fight and try to force them off the bot, create that pressure that way, instead of using it here. Because I can pop my ult here and contest this space, but you know, we don't need to because you have the lead. We don't need to take any more space. It's just about utilizing all the space we have. They, they have to push and then saving my ult for that final fight that they have to take. So again, you know, there I was thinking if my Roadhog hits this hook, I'm ready to railgun it. Okay, here I'm just eing off my that Sojourn, you know, zoning her out, my Genji goes the fighter. And right here, I'm just playing this high ground angle. Same thing. I didn't see any support, so I railgun the Junker Queen instead. And same thing, we're popping ult and we're targeting supports. See you. 
Okay, 30 seconds. So this is the final fight. Now all we want to do is just be in the most favorable position we can. And that's just going to be this high ground right here. And my, my whole team kind of understands, like, like let's get in a good position to take this final fight, right? Yep. So we all make the decision to, to take this final high ground. And here, I'm just kind of chilling. I'm, I'm contesting the surgeon. We're just kind of matching the pressure right side. I'm trying to get this energy off of my team, EM out. But then the, the surgeon swings right side and catches me off guard. So what I need to do there is you know, respect their Genji. I need to force Genji out, but the second Sojourn comes to contest me, I just need to pivot back to that Sojourn and force her out. And that was just kind of slow reaction time for me on that Sojourn. Gotcha, but you guys ended up winning anyway. So, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Well, great. Awesome. Well, uh, very much appreciate you going into Sojourn. Uh, very interesting character, and uh, my, like with many of the other characters that we've covered thus far, or heroes, um now i want to play it so <laughs> um, yeah so so just some some kind of key points or takeaways to think about when you're playing sojourn is save rails for for squishy targets right your railgun is going to get much more value on a target that doesn't have sustain abilities as opposed to a tank like if orissa has fortify if Roadhog has heal he wants you to shoot him they, the tanks they want to take your damage okay so if you're gonna throw all your railguns to the tank then you're just you're not thinking right you know so save your railguns for the squishy targets Save your E's to zone out squishy targets as well. You can you can save your E for the tank, but same thing. It's not going to get as much value because they do want to be taking more damage than the other players. Okay. And then the most important thing really is your slide. Save your slide to help you get to, to high grounds for better vantage points. But also save your save your slide to make sure you can disengage from any dives like Genji Dash, you know, Winston jump, anything of that sort, any kind of pressure, you need to make sure you have your slide so you can disengage. Awesome. Well, and it looks like there's some really unique places on some of the maps you can get to or, or different angles you can play compared yeah. to, you know, maybe like a similar to a Farah or others that are just unique locations that um, maybe in a later video we can go into. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel uh, for more of these videos. Uh, the next one we're going to be going over is uh, another support character. Uh, and then we'll continue the rotation into tank and DPS. And uh, hopefully everyone in is enjoying the series. I know that I'm, I feel fortunate to be able to spend this time with Coach Theory. Uh, if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one time with him, please go check him out on Fiverr. Uh, he has some packages available where he's willing to review your, your replays. He's willing to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and so you can also check him out on YouTube uh, under Coach Theory. And we'll catch you in the next one. Yeah, it's been awesome. Cool, man.